It says, can you make a male babysitter pay child support? I am a single mom going to college with my sister. We currently rent an apartment together. A couple of weeks ago, I asked my neighbor, a trustworthy guy, if he could watch the kids for two hours while I went to class and my sister wasn't home and he agreed. If he babysits and doesn't accept pay, can I sue him for child support because he took on fought a fatherly role? I'm sure I can convince a court that he has accepted a fatherly role. Here. Today's topic, we are going to do, I mean, I'm going to react to a video of a man who is going to teach us about the laws being put together to hurt men more. I think his name is Dennis Sperling, and he's, he's actually a lawyer, but uh, not a married, not a married or, or however you call it, lawyer type, different type. Um, he he's gonna teach us why we should not actually hang around or date single mothers because that can be very harmful to us. Not only that, the government is the government is trying its best down to hurt men even more because men are not wanting to be hurt by divorce cases anymore. So now they're trying to do their best to find a way to hurt men in a different way and he said that in the video if you are not careful of, about where you spend your time it or your time you might it will hurt you financially or your wallet but not only is gonna hurt you financially I'm gonna say it's gonna hurt you psychologically and mentally and uh, as well physically because you're gonna have to work harder to do that. So, without further ado, let's get into it. What's up, you guys? This is Dennis Sperling, also known as Uncle V, and in my day job, I'm an attorney. I've been practicing law for 21 years. I've practiced exclusively civil litiga litigation, a little criminal law here. I started off working as a law clerk many, many years ago. And um, I have a law degree from Tulane and LLM in environmental law and a JD from Southern University of Baton Rouge. And one of the things that I learned, like every other learn, every other lawyer learns in law school, the basic classes is about family law. And I learned at that time that family law is probably the most arbitrary and capricious area of the civil litigation system there is. Your rights are limited, you, and, and the government has an interest in the outcome in that they want these children to be taken care of. And they will, if they can't find a, a they'll, they'll take the best candidate available. They will take. Let, let, let me pause right here. So right off the bat, he mentions what is going on. The government is trying to find the best candidate, not meaning the best candidate as the best provider, but in the sense of who is closer and who can who they can snatch on quicker to because you know if the person lives in Wyoming, they're not going to try to find somebody in. Florida and say you're gonna pay child support. They're gonna find somebody in that surrounding that woman surrounding to actually get that guy. And <laughs> so just to begin with, he's already spitting out the warnings that we as men we need to take. But let's move on. Let's move on. 
the best father, the closest father available, because they know if they don't get a dad involved to help foot the bill for these children, whether it's his or not, then they're going to have to pay for it. Here is the uh, here is the irony. I remember when I first learned about that over here in this country that divorce are made by women. Actually, um, out of a hundred marriages, fifty percent of the marriages end up in divorce. At least fifty one percent end up in divorce, and out of the fifty one percent, eighty percent of them are made by women. You know why? Because they've been told that, hey, you're a woman, you're, you're extraordinary, you're beautiful, you're a queen, you're a strong or independent femaleist, and you can do whatever you want to do. Nobody can stop you. Therefore, the women now have married men who could provide, and what they did was they, they decided to hurt these men because of the patriarchy or nonsense. Decided to hurt the men now, not physically, but monetary in the family court. So, what happens in the family court? The woman, 90% of the time, gets custody of the child. And if she wants to get have full custody, they will give it to her. So, that leaves the men broke, financially unstable, having to work two or three jobs sometimes. And nearly homeless to pay for to be a child support and alimony sometimes. So now what we are, have learned as men, we are like, okay, you know what? We are not playing this game anymore. We are refusing to get married, or if we get married, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna wait till we are like maybe in our forties, because at that time she's not gonna be able to go and divorce because. Hey, you never know. I may not have the chance to have a baby, so I better stick to that guy because I'm getting old, wrinkled, and what man is gonna find me attractive at that age? So men are now refraining from getting married at a young age because it's very easy for the girl to get pregnant and still stay beautiful, and then divorce the man and get child support from that man and all the money. So now what the government is doing is the government is trying to. Because we are now playing the game better, they're going to try to find another way to go around and force men to become fathers. Or not fathers, but to become child support payers, in a sense. But, I don't want to go too fast or too ahead. Let him continue. Let's keep watching. So, and when I say they, that means the government that comes out of the public, the public coffers. So when it comes to the topic of equitable parent doctrine, a lot of people say, oh, no, of course, we're not going to be able to. That's ridiculous. I'm not going to have to pay for a child that's not mine just because I hung around that child. Are you kidding me? That's not necessarily so. And there are some examples of this out there. Matter of fact. Uh, just for, for you guys who don't know what the equitable, equitable parent doctrine is, I'm going to bring up a, 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 a image for you guys to check out. Right. Basically, the equitable parent doctrine says the following. Um, it is it, it recognizes that a parent who is not the biological parent of the child. Uh, who is not the biological parent of the child of the marriage may still be considered the child's parent if the following can be proven. Now, some of you are saying, okay, well, I'm not marrying anybody, but I'm just trying to tell you guys, even if you don't volunteer for it, even if you object to it, you still may be held responsible. So what does this mean? This Well, this means that <laughs> this means that if you're not if you're not volunteering for it, then you will be voluntold. Yeah, you know what it means like you were told to do it. Even if you didn't volunteer, you were voluntold. And the government is doing right now the best that it can because they don't wanna become the father. Hey, actually, many of the women they have married their men, but they 
I wanted to fornicate with the government and the government decided to go with the fornication with these women and now that other men have learned what the what is going on and they are they are no longer approaching this type of women or women at all in general now they are seeing that okay we have less cases of divorce people I think having less cases of divorce is a good thing well not not in the sense of less marriages if you had more marriages and less divorce that's a good thing but divorce is declining because marriage is declining you know why because most of the women have gone and slept with the government and now we are having this issue of the women that are single mothers unable to find men and thanks to many men now out there who are pushing that message do not date um, single mothers now of course if she was if her husband died and you can prove that actually you know what guys before you even get to that part to dating a single mother always do your research always there are some what's are called um being verified people search or i think it's um search people something like that people search where you can find out if truly that person was married and the husband passed away if not be careful because you never know where you're gonna end up but let's move on means that if you're dating a woman and you decide that you want to spend time with her and she has children and you take the child to the medical doctor, the dental doctor, you're picking the child up, uh, you let the kid call you stepdaddy uh, or daddy, um, the child knows you as father. Uh, you, 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 you help spend money on the child, uh, you know, you pay for birthdays and gifts and all that stuff. You are holding yourself out as that child. And there's an expectation. Um, there's an expectation between you and that child that you're his parent and that child is, is has expectations. <laughs> and, you, and you have, you asked for that child to be uh, your child and you may end up paying child support for it. I know you guys are like, Dennis, you got to be kidding me, man. What are you talking about? You out of your mind. Nobody's even thinking about this. You, you get out of here with that. Are you crazy? Come on, man. No woman is ever going to do something that dirty and low down, try to put a child off on me that's not my child. What woman would do that? That would be horrible. No, Dennis, you tripping. Okay, cool. I got you. I appreciate you guys, and I used to think like that, too. And uh, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of guys out there who, who think like that. We all have been taught to believe that women are sugar and spice and everything nice, and we should believe her and all those good things like that. And that's wonderful to feel like that. But um, I'm telling you that there are women out there who are looking for men to help take care of their children. And you should really consider uh, whether or not it's safe for your pocket to date women who have children. Gents, you should really, really consider if it is safe for your pocket for you to date a single mother. As I mentioned earlier, if you did your research and found out that eventually she had married, but the husband died in a tragic uh, way or whatever it was, then maybe you have a past to, okay, you know what? I'm going to do some more research to see if I can be around that person. But if she either had uh, just a baby out of a red lock, red lock, or she divorced her husband, I would be very careful not to even roam around her and her children or child, whichever one it is. But let's move on. Now, I know that, uh, you know, there are a lot of women out there who, uh, who uh, you know, who, who who are hard up and they don't have children's fathers and they're looking for people. This is, a, they're looking for people to help share that bill. 
and they really don't care who it is. This is an article that we found, okay, online. It says, can you make a male babysitter pay child support? I am a single mom going to college with my sister. We currently rent an apartment together. A couple of weeks ago, I asked my neighbor, a trustworthy guy, if he could watch the kids for two hours while I went to class and my sister wasn't home and he agreed. If he babysits and doesn't accept pay, can I sue him for child support because he took on fought a fatherly role? I'm sure I can convince a court that he has accepted a fatherly role. If you don't accept the pay, that means you are okay with being the father because, in a sense, she is right. Because when she wanted to pay you, you said no, in a sense, that could be my son. Because a father does not get paid to watch his son. If the mother goes somewhere, the father will watch the son because that's his son. Now, if you decide not to get that money from her to prove that you were babysitting, you were acting like a father, then she can sue you because he didn't take that money. That means now you were okay to be in a fatherly figure at that moment. Makes sense. Hmm. Think about that. Now, the answer to this question, can I sue him for child support? The answer is yes. Not because there may be a valid claim, but because you can sue anybody for anything here in the United States. Yeah, you can. You can sue him. Uh, so, and, and here's another thing. If he babysits, can I? Yeah, you can sue him because he took whether or not he took on the fatherly role, that's going to be a factual analysis. In this case, I don't know. Probably not because he only babysat once. But there are other occasions. Guys who, even if it's a neighbor, you've never had sex with the woman, right? You pick the kids up, you take them somewhere nice, buy them ice cream. You do that over a period of time, right? You've taken on the fatherly role, right? Now, the question is, how much of that? Okay, can you watch it? Next thing you know, can you take them to the doctor's office? Can you drop them off at school? Uh, can you take them out to uh, get some McDonald's? Can you? Yeah, this is not your biological child, but are you taking on the fatherly role? Now, a lot of people out there say, oh, my God, but it, doesn't he have to volunteer for that? Well, here's a case from the state of Michigan. Court of Appeals, Stankovich versus Milliron. Now, this is a case where two individuals who have same-sex marriage got married. At the time, the biological mother had became pregnant while they were married and gave birth while they were married. The, sex, the lesbian or LGBT partner, the woman, wanted visitation. So she began to spend time with the child and, and, you know, and there was an agreement that amongst them that she would be the custodial parent, even though she does not have any biological affili affiliation or connection with this child. So, you know, why should a person that doesn't have any connection be deemed the father under the equitable parent doctrine? Now, some of you said, oh, well, but she volunteered for that. She filed a motion to be that. Well, here's the thing. It's not always necessarily voluntary. Let me let you read something. I want you to read this. This is from uh, this is from the great state of Michigan. This is a 2016 case, I believe. We adopt the doctrine of equitable parent and find a husband who is not the biological father of a child born or conceived during the marriage may be considered the natural father of that child where, number one, the husband and the child mutually acknowledge a relationship as father and child, or the mother of the child was 
has cooperated in the development of such a relationship over a period of time prior to filing of the complaint for divorce. So if you marry a woman with children in Michigan and you hold that child out as your child and you do all this stuff and you 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 act as though you you're you know you're the parent, right? That implies that you're asking for. It. That implies that you want to be in this child's life. And so you guys say, oh, well, that I'm not going to ever do that. That's not going to be voluntary. I, uh, uh. Okay, let me read that part for you guys. He said, he said, uh, the husband, number two, the husband desires, desires to have the right afforded to a parent. And three, the husband is willing to take on the responsibility of paying child support. Ooh. The husband is willing to take on the responsibility of paying the child support. The husband is willing to, right? This is what this says, right? So you're thinking, oh, I'm, I'm safe. That, that's, then I'm not going to ever do that. Now read this next slide. This court stated that given, stated that, given its recognition that a person who is not the biological father of a child may be considered a parent against his will and consequently burdened with the responsibility of the support for the child. Such a person is such a person person is being treated as a parent may also seek rights of custody or the parenting time. Here's what they're saying. Now they're saying a person who is not the biological father of a child may be considered a parent against his will and consequently burdened with the responsibility of support for the child. Such a person in being treated as a parent may also seek rights of custody as a parent. Now they're saying at the point where the person sticks the baby on you and your butt is now stuck paying child support, you might as well see custody rights. So they, they're making you get all in. Now what changed? What happened? What changed? Well, this particular case, this Michigan case, which came out in uh, 2015, November 2015, it it all changed because of this Supreme Court case. Ober, Obershville versus Hodges, this is the Supreme Court case that um, legalized same-sex marriage. It basically says that, you know, in this particular case, we had some people who were trying to get married, and, and you know, and they said it was illegal, and, you know, it was a whole big mess. You guys remember this back in 2015, I hope. But the Supreme Court got hold of it and they said, well, you know what? You have a right to get married. It's equal protection clause. And so they basically threw out all the marriage laws, at least the, the, the other ones. So now we don't really know what's going to happen. And any family law lawyer that tells you they do know what's going on, they really don't. They don't know what's going to happen. Remember, there are women out there who are scamming and trying to figure out ways they can get into your pocket. Bella? So where does that leave us? What do you do? Well, I think what you guys should do is really think about whether or not it's safe for your for your wallet to date women who have children because you really don't know what's going to happen. Here's the thing. It in proving up whether or not um you should take up your you you should be held responsible for taking up the fatherly role under the equitable parent doctrine, at least under this Michigan case, is going to be fact intensive. So let's say a single mom, and this is a real scenario. You start dating a single mom, you, you like her, you know, she has a child, that child is, doesn't have a relationship with their own father. That's usually how they get you in, right? The child doesn't have any relationship. There's no child support coming in. I ain't put my baby daddy on child support. Well, maybe she didn't put him on child support because he's in jail and she doesn't know who the baby daddy is. You don't know that. You weren't there. You don't know. But the fact of the matter is that child is not receiving child support. So there's been no acknowledgement. That. And even if there's a birth certificate, I don't know. But the bottom line is nobody's paying for that child. So let's say you, with your big simp heart, you decide to take that child in as your own. Why are you dating this woman? And over the years, you develop a relationship. Remember, you know, three, four years for a child is a long time, man. 
So you dropping the kid off at school, people thank you to daddy. I know people around here in the hood, especially uh, kids get a new stepdaddy every two years. She dating one dude, next dude. I mean, the school the school teachers don't know. They've seen so many different stepdaddies. They're like, damn, okay. But bottom line is they got guys in there representing that they're the new stepdaddy, that they're the dad. They're picking the children up. They're coming there for parent-teacher meetings. They're taking the children to the doctor's office. They're taking the, taking the children to the dentist. They're taking them to the movies. They're taking them to practice. They're picking them up from school. They're doing. They're, they're living together. They're paying bills. They're buying presents. These are fatherly duties. So if that woman decides, when you decide to break up with her, say, oh, well, yeah, you can break up with me, and yeah, we're not married, but you've taken on the role of father to my child. And even though it's not voluntary, still, I can make you pay. <laughs> How would you feel about that, fellas? How would you feel about that? This court, I'm going to go back to this Michigan case because I just thought this was intriguing. All right, guys. So we're going we're gonna to stop it right here. We're going to stop it right here because, whew, man, we're going to have a, we're gonna have a part two of that because that's a long video. We're not going to see the whole thing right now. So, <laughs> be careful. Be careful who you are roaming around with. Be careful. And I'm going to also put the, the link, the, the video link down there so you guys can go and watch it for yourself as well until then. But... So, this was Mario Michel. Hope to see you guys again. Until then. Ooh. Mario out.